I often get questions on how to use luminosity mask to enhance subtle detail. For example, Eurico Voss had this image asking how to enhance these tiny branches of lightning in the scene. This is a great image to compare multiple luminosity masking techniques because the minor branches, the main branches, and the glow of the lightning all require different approaches. Let's get started with the raw by dragging it into Photoshop to open it up in Adobe Camera Raw. And the first thing I want to do with this image is adjust the color balance. I want to go and pull down the temp and tint to give it a little bit more of a night feel. And then to help further enhance that, I'm going to go down to the bottom to the camera calibration tab and grab the blue saturation and slide that up to around maybe 50 to create this overall sense of a night scene here. And then on top of that, I want to separate the lightning from its background and I can do that more easily if we just darken the image a bit. So I'm going to pull down about maybe like two tenths of a stop, not very much at all. And then lastly, Earl has properly exposed the image, but it is very dark. So let's go push up our shadows to something like plus 50 seems about right. Now that gives the overall macro raw processing I want, but if we zoom into the details, we'll see that there's some issues we need to address here. Notice, for example, that there's a lot of chromatic aberration. So let's go down to remove chromatic aberration. I pretty much do this on every image. There's also some haloing around these small branches of lightning, and where that's coming from is the default sharpening. So if we go up to the detail tab and in the sharpening area, take the radius down to the minimum on the left. That just eliminates that halo. And then lastly, there's quite a bit of noise here. Earl shot this at ISO 250, and with the darker open sky, it's just going to show noise. So we want to eliminate that, and a great way to do that is with Adobe's AI Denoise. So just click for Denoise. The default values auto work just fine, so we'll go ahead and click Enhance. We'll see that it's processing in the background, and when it's done, all the adjustments we've already made will be applied to a new version of the image here in just a second. So here's our new image. You can see it's marked as Enhanced Noise Reduction. And I'm going to open it up in Photoshop as a raw smart object. So we've got all of our raw processing ready to go. And now we can start working on the luminosity masking for the fine detail. And my vision here is to enhance these tiny branches, as Earl asked, and then to enhance the main branches. Because if I bring up the small branches and leave the main ones as they are, things start to look a little bit competitive. So I want to make sure the main branches still stay dominant. So I'm going to make them a little bit brighter. And they're already white, so I can't make them any brighter without going to HDR, which would be a great option for this image. It would look great, but we're going to stick with SDR. And in order to make them look brighter, I'm going to add a little bit of glow later. So for these tiny branches, the first thing we need to do is figure out some way to target them. We're going to use luminosity masks created with Lumenzia. And the question we need to ask ourselves is, what is it about these pixels that stands out from the background? We have a range from kind of mid-tones with blue and purple tones all the way up to full white in the lightning. So it's a pretty broad range of color and tone. And then the background around it is going from a slightly darker blue up to a nearly white value here. So there's a lot of crossover in terms of the background values and the lightning values. And that is always a challenge for luminosity mass. We need to think carefully about the right approach here. Now you might naturally think with something that's light like this, we want to go for a lights preview. So let's go up to Lumencia, click on L for a lights preview. And as a quick refresher, the preview you get from Lumenzi is created with these orange layers here. And what you're looking at is the white areas are what would turn into a strong selection, something we could paint onto a mask and really reveal an adjustment, in this case, brightening for the lightning. So that's good. We've selected the lightning. And then the black areas are not selected. We can't paint there, so we wouldn't be able to paint on the foreground. However, the gray areas are proportional, meaning that if we were to go paint through a selection like this, we would spill quite a bit of paint onto the background and we would be brightening up the sky around the lightning. We'd be creating kind of a halo and we don't want that. We need something more targeted. So we can customize this preview. If we go drag down our slider to something like lights two, you see it looks like we have a little more separation, but there's still quite a bit of gray here. This is definitely going to be an issue. So let's go a little bit darker. And at this point, some of the lightning is fairly separated. Some of the lightning is starting to disappear and not really be selected at all. And we still have sky involvement. So this approach isn't quite working for us because we just have too much crossover in terms of the lightning tones and the sky tones. So what if we back it off and instead use the color? These orange layers that Lumenzia creates, you can customize them. And if you select the black and white adjustment layer, you can click and drag right in the image. So I'm going to click here and I'm working with the underlying blue color. If you were to open up the black and white layer, you'd see as we drag here on this layer that we're changing the blue targeting. So if we exclude blue, then we're really focused on things which are light and not blue. 
However, the sky itself is so desaturated that it's still kind of shining through. So we just, again, have too much similarity between some areas of lightning and some areas of sky to really separate with a light approach. So let's hit X to discard that, and we need to think about a different way. Well, we could use something like a mid-tone selection, try and be a little more targeted. I mean, it's not bad off the start, but we are missing minor bits of lightning and we still have sky. Ultimately, we could go and try and tweak the values and play around here, but you're going to run into the same problem using the mid-tones that we have with the lights, which is just the tonal values are just too similar. So let's cancel that. Well, what if we consider the level of saturation? We can look at a vibrance mask. Doesn't really separate right. If we look at saturation, that's definitely not going to cut it. What if we go to just a pure color-based approach? We could go use the color picker, go pick the blue sky, and see if we can't do something we can invert here. So we've got a selection of blue sky. We can go click not to invert it. And so again, we're seeing the lightning and we've got this blue background. We could remove some of this by going into our levels and excluding the blacks. But again, it's the same problem. All of these approaches are just considering one pixel at a time. And the, the fundamental issue is that across the range of lightning pixels and sky pixels, there's just too much crossover. So we need a different way of looking at things. And what makes the lightning unique in every case is it's always brighter than the pixels around it. We need to exploit that difference in the values. And the way to do that in Lemenzia is with the difference preview. So we click on this and we'll just choose the lighter option, meaning that we're going to look at pixels which are lighter than their neighbors. So we click on this and now we finally have something that does truly help separate the lightning from its background. And we can customize this preview with the slider so we can look at smaller areas of comparison. See, we can really get to those finer branches by sliding to the left. We could slide to the right to look at bigger things like the main bolt of lightning. So this is going to be a good approach for us. But before we use it, let's go create the adjustment we're going to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and just discard this for now. And what I want to do is brighten up these pixels. So let's go create a brightness contrast layer. Double click to open it up and let's just make things much brighter. Push it up to like maybe say 100. So this will be the way that we make the adjustment. And we want to hide everything with a black mask to begin. So we're going to alt or option click on mask. So the black mask will conceal everything. And then once we start painting on it over just the little pixels that have lightning, that will reveal our adjustment to the lightning. So we need now that selection. So we'll go back up to the diff preview in Lemenzia. Again, choose lighter. And let's go bring this down just a little bit. Going for these minor areas. And let's zoom in and make sure we don't have any noise selected. If we had Noise in the image, it might show up here, but we've done a nice job of reducing noise, so we're not seeing that come through in the masking. So that looks nice and clean. So I think this will be a great way to go and target these minor branches of lightning. So what I want to do now is turn this preview into an actual selection, and we do that by going to click the cell button in Lemenzia. You'll see the button now is lit in green to let us know there's an active selection, and we just need to make sure our layer mask is selected, hitting B for our brush. I'm going to shrink it down to a more appropriate size make sure I've got white paint loaded and high opacity and a relatively moderate flow. So we can paint white through our selection onto these branches of lightning. So the selection is what's guiding the paint. So it falls right on the lightning itself. And the adjustments I'm making so far are a bit subtle. If you're paying close attention, you'll see it, but I'll show the comparison in just a moment. And I want to make sure I get things even like this little stray bolt of lightning there. I think that's kind of cool and interesting. It adds some depth to the cloud to see that little extra bit of lightning. So I'm just really focused on these secondary branches, not down below. The bottom area is so bright already that I don't want to play with that. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And let's just see how we've done here. If we look from before to after, that just brings out that minor detail. Now, as we've done this, and I think we're done with that. So let's go ahead and hit Command D to deselect. We'll see the cell button's no longer lit green. As we've done this, these minor branches have gotten brighter. I want to make sure the main bolt stays really powerful and bright. So I want to go brighten that up further and we can basically take the same approach. Let's go create another brightness contrast layer, open it up, push to about 100 again. And again, alt or option click on mask for a black mask. And now we just need a selection of the main bolt. So again, we'll go back to the difference preview, lighter, but this time, instead of going for the minor branches, we want to slide to the right for something which hits this main branch better. And that seems like that would do a pretty good job there around this value of 30. We could try something higher, but if we do that, notice there's kind of a glow. If we look really closely here, that there's a bit of a glow around it at these values. When I go back to something closer to like 
30 or so, I don't have a whole lot of glow around it. And that's more hitting just this main bolt of lightning. I'll get to the glow in a moment with a separate adjustment. So I think this will be the right mask for us. Let's load it as a selection by clicking on the cell button. Then again, hit B for our brush and shrinking down my brush a little bit, just painting over the main bolt of lightning. So again, we're just painting under the layer mask on this new layer, and we have a different selection to target the main bolt of lightning, and also this secondary one. I think both of these should be brightened up a bit. And this is a little bit subtle, but let's see how we've done here by toggling that. You can see that brings out just a little bit of change there. It's pretty subtle. And part of the reason for that is just simply how bright things already are. So I think we definitely need to go and add some glow to make this more strong. So let's deselect with Command D. And this time we're gonna add another adjustment to brighten things, but we'll need a different selection to select around the lightning. So we'll need a little bit different approach. Let's go create our adjustment layer by clicking for brightness contrast layer. Let's open it up. And instead of using brightness this time, I wanna push up the contrast. See how that has kind of a nice glow effect to it? It is shifting the color, so let's go change the blend mode down to luminosity. So there's kind of our glow, and we just need to apply it directly to the bolt and around the, the lightning bolt. So let's go and alter option click on the mask, give ourselves a black mask. We have a blank canvas to start painting onto. And now we need to select that main bolt and the areas just around it. And if you think back to our original lights preview, that had that problem of a bit of haloing. So let's go use that. Let's go click on L for lights preview. And right now we have way too much sky. I just wanna be close to the lightning bolt. So let's try something like lights two, still too much. I don't wanna have the glow go way across the sky. Let's try something down to like lights 3.25. That looks pretty good. That has kind of a nice glow to it. So I think that'll work well. Let's load that as our selection by clicking on cell. With our mask active, B for our brush. Again, white paint with high opacity and modest flow. Just go brush right over these areas. And this time we're adding a little bit of glow to this lightning bolt. And again, we're just building things up in sort of subtle ways here. So it's gonna take the combination of all these adjustments to get where we wanna go. And maybe even see what I can do over here a little bit. Let's try that. And you see that's adding a bit more glow to that main bolt. And if we look at the cumulative effect at this point, if I just alter option click on the bottom, here's where we started and here's where we are now. And that's looking quite a bit more impressive to me. I think that's a really nice foundation. And I think at this point I can deselect by hitting Command D and think about how do we bring it all together? I think a little bit of clarity in this case could really enhance the base that we've created. So the way to apply clarity is gonna be as a filter on a smart object. So we need to combine all this content. And just for the sake of comparison, let's first duplicate the bottom layer so we'll be able to compare to where we started here. So I'm gonna drag it to the bottom, let's right click, make it red, and I'm just gonna call it raw. So this is just a reference for us. It's not really contributing to the image, but for the sake of comparison, we'll have it for later. So the actual working layers, let's grab them by shift clicking to select all of these, then right click and go choose to convert to smart object. So now that we have it as a smart object, we can always go back into it and make changes if we need to, but we can also apply filters to it as it is here. So we can go up to filter, camera raw filter, and then let's go add clarity, maybe like 50 points of clarity ought to work well. Now, if I hit P to compare before to after, you notice that I'm getting a nice glow around the lightning, but I'm also making some areas of the image quite dark with the clarity, and I don't really want that. There's no way to limit this here in the raw, but we can do it in Photoshop by changing the way that we apply this filter. So let's accept it as it is. And then with our raw filter here, if we were to double click here, we would go and edit the settings, but if we double click over here, instead of getting the raw settings, we actually get the option for how it blends and we can change the blending mode from normal over to lighten. And if we do that, comparing before where it's darkening to after, now the effect is just hitting the areas that get brighter without making anything darker. Or we can just kind of toggle this off for a second to see before to after that's kind of that glow we're gonna be adding to it. And we just need to paint it into the areas where it benefits. We don't wanna have it down here in the trees but we do want it in the lightning and it looks pretty good in the clouds. Let's go do that. Let's go click on our mask, hit Command I to invert to black. So everything's turned off and we need to paint it in. We don't need a selection here. We just need a large white brush. Let's make our brush bigger and then just start painting on these areas to reveal it. This is kind of just an easy mask to create here. 
painting where you want the benefit. You can see on the cloud here. And with that, let's see how we did here. If we go turn our original back on, we can't see it yet, but we can now turn our edited version off. And see, here's where we started with the raw processing. And then after making those adjustments to bring out the details in the lightning and add a bit of clarity, we get this really nice enhancement. And if we zoom in a bit, you can just really see the before and after how it really strengthens up that scene quite a bit. That lightning feels a lot more powerful and electric, gives you a real sense of what it would have been like to be there. And the last comment I'll make is that you'll notice in my previews here, everything's always hitting some kind of white value. Even when I go to really restrictive selections, and the reason for that, I've got a setting enabled in Lament. If you go to the top right flyout, then go to the orange preview options, turning on auto optimize levels layer, this will give you a stronger preview. And I would recommend turning that on. In fact, going forward, this will be the default for new installations, but it's probably off in your version. Turning that on will help you get just some better previews as you work here without having to dive into the levels layer all the time to make those adjustments yourself. Now to learn more about Lumenzia, click on this next video.